Oh, Jesus. Who's, who's meaty slapper was that? That was Kaya. That was incredible. No I, no, I think that was Charlie. That was incredible. Mm, maybe. Just Don't try to push credit off onto Charlie. That was all you, Kaya. I He's know being hands. modest. No, that was all you, Charlie. Just felt like a normal clap to me. Take us in, Jackson. <laughs> That's what the Hulk hey. would say. <clears throat> Alright, starting now. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the official podcast, episode 203. With me are my co-hosts, Andrew, Charlie, and Kaya. I am Jackson, also a host of the official podcast. Charlie, what do you have to bring us today? What are you offering up? Uh, well, I don't have a whole lot of crazy shit to mention, uh, but if you're a fan of sports, the Lightning won the Stanley Cup recently, and the Rays yes. are in the World Series, so Tampa Woo-wee. could take home two big sports titles this year. What does that mean, though? What does that mean for Tampa? Uh, well, it's still a shithole, but we have good athletes. You think Tampa's a shithole? What shit does it mean for Earth? Yeah, what does it mean for me in Australia? What do I get from this? I've been to Tampa once. Twice. Then you've indirectly helped contribute to these championships. I did. We went to a lightning proud. game. We did? I, we contributed to the, their morale, mm-hmm. I guess. Wait, that was last season though, right? So they lost that season. <laughs> Jackson jinxed it. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's actually the same season. It was January. Oh, it is? Yeah, so... Oh, that was January? Okay. Jackson I'm blessed lost. it. Yeah, as soon as I showed up and bought some merchandise from them, they went straight to the top of the Stanley Cup. I'm actually wearing a uh, a lightning beanie right now because it's cold in my room. Oh, Nice. Aw. Wait, why is it cold in your room? Isn't it I, supposed I bl- to be I, summer yeah, there? It's, it's summer, so I blast the aircon, but I, it's cold oh. now because of the aircon, so... So turn it down. <laughs> You're in control. I, yeah, it's impossible. It, it, it's I didn't have enough time to turn it down. I didn't want to be cold during this. Oh. Anyway, good. Good on them. Good on them. I guess. But they, mm-hmm. the thing about sports is that I don't understand why you really care about um, like cities winning the Stanley Cup or whatever. Be- because they can just buy players, can't yeah. they? They just buy players from anywhere. It, it's pretty absurdly dumb that there's so much, like, location loyalty to a team, but the players are not from that location at all. Yeah, most of them are Russian. What? What? Yeah, right. most of them are... <laughs> most of them, <laughs> uh, aren't most hockey players Jackson, Russian? Jackson, I was fucking talking about how they trade players between cities and states all the time. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I have no, no idea. idea. Did I the mean, Soviets most... infiltrate Tampa? <laughs> I, I swear most of them are like Ukrainian and Russian and they're just brought over on, on sports uh, visas to There to are play some in. Russian hockey players, but I, I think it'd be very hard to argue the majority majority is i think the majority is i i think i i don't know how we do this research if we if we count every single hockey player and figure out what the majority nationality is but i think the the main nationality would be russian maybe canadian actually canadian's huge yeah yeah canada's huge and well both i mean both countries are huge in hockey but i don't know if i would say most american hockey league players are russian the NHL isn't just America, is it? It's also Canada. Well, it's the National Hockey League. Although it might... Yeah, but it also, they, they also play in Canada. Yeah, it, it might it's include like a joint Canada effort. as well. Okay. Hmm. So then if it does include Canada, then I'd wager that more people come from Canada than Russia if they're yeah, foreign hockey players. So. Are you sure? Most, I mean, should they maybe be investigated? For what, for what? Being Russian? Is that illegal? <laughs> Hiring Russians? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you were Aren't playing hockey while Russians? Russian. That's a million dollar fine to your team. Aren't they notorious for doping their athletes or something in the Olympics? Russia? Isn't that an ongoing scandal every single year that they always dope their athletes? Mm. Yeah, I, I think nice. that's pretty yeah. common. I think that's common with every, every nationality, though. Like, it's more to do with, like, just corrupt teams in general. Mm-hmm. True, like, what, still, they're what, Russian. What was, what was that, um, uh, Lance Armstrong, the cyclist who, who 
he spent his whole career doped up on um, whatever, whatever happened to him. Steroids. Uh, he's still cycling to this day. I'm pretty sure, no, just without drugs running through. His, oh, he's not. No, he's like super banned from cycling. Oh, he can, yeah, but they can't take away his bike. He can still ride around. No, like, they see him on a bike. He goes to jail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> riding. They took dope. away his bike license. I want you to hand over your gun and your bike. You're suspended without pay. So that's a that's a good morality question for you guys. Do you think that doping like that should Execution. be illegal in those sports? Or do you think those sports no. should be the absolute complete pushing and peak of the human body? And that should be fine. I think there should be two. I should be there. Uh, there should be like a clean version of the industry and then just go balls to the walls. Like, yeah, inject people with superhuman serum and see how far their bodies can go. I, I and then personally, with other I, I agree with you, Jackson. I want there to be some form, whether it's a different league or maybe they could have like drugs month where drugs are totally OK for a month or something where we just get to see crazy fucking superhuman freaks playing these sports. I want to see that. I feel yeah. like sport sports is one industry yeah. and animals sport, sporting sporting is one industry that hasn't really innovated or done anything um, new in like a hundred years. They've just been, but they basically just adjust small little rules within their own, you know, uh, competitive sports field, but there's nothing, nothing new. Like what was the last new sport invented? Digital e sports. sports. Uh, honestly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So not really, you know, physical. Well, does sports really need to change? I mean, people, sports are still at incredible levels of popularity. It's not like major sports are dying off, you know. People yeah, still like sports. Let's make a new one. Invent it. I don't care why. I mean, don't we have the technology for Quidditch yet? There's something out of a movie. You mean magic technology? <laughs> 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 no, I don't believe we've invented magic yet. <laughs> maybe next time. Maybe next year. I don't know. Her boards and jetpacks or something. But yeah, I'm down. Just dope them all and take robots. Have to fight it against robots. Fuck it. What would our sport be mm. based around? So so every sport has like a key fundamental, like football is moving a ball down a field against other players, and basketball is putting a ball through a hoop, and soccer is putting a ball kicking a ball in a net. What would be the primary fun goal of our sport? Get laid. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I was honestly gonna say I think I think sex sports would be a massive hit. Convin I think it'd be fucking incredible. Convince someone to have sex with you during the game. Yeah, but you take like the most stubborn people, like nuns and stuff, and you have to like do your best. You gotta flirt with them. Yeah. Yeah. So our sports called like hot flirting or something. <laughs> Flirt ball, I Flirt guess. ball. I yeah. Well, what, where does <laughs> the ball the come ball? in? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's your nuts. You guys are really forgetting the aspect that any professional athlete can get any pussy. So that's not going to be much of a challenge. I don't care if it's a nun. That nun is going to strip like a banana once she sees fucking Tom Brady in front of her. Well, how about we flip it then? How about the goal is to not get laid? You're a professional athlete and we hire like the horniest people on the planet to chase you and you have to avoid them. So oh, hide and seek. How about this? It's a win-win win game. Football players, and the <laughs> sport is don't beat your wife. Damn. You could make that a thing. <laughs> Jeez, if we're gonna go a down Andrew, that route. Andrew just Andrew just described hide and seek with a splash of rape on the side. Yeah, man. Well, think like, it's a it's a win-win win, away from sex. It's a win-win win game. It's a win-win game because either you win the game and you get the accolades and you become the world champion of whatever the name of this game is, love ball. Or you get some sex. How, how could, how could this everything? possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah. mm. You sound concerned for some unknown reason. I just don't think there's it's any still... other cool sports right now. Until technology evolves a little bit more, I think we're still stuck with the same traditional sports. Yeah, people are set in their ways. Yeah. Oh, the cool sports are disappearing. Have... What are the cool sports? Like what? Like skating and stuff like that. Skateboarding, I mean. Well, like, the, the reason it... it's disappearing is because it hasn't changed. So it's still mainly like the same tricks and stuff. 
Yeah, I but guess. it's not it's not like disappearing. There's always going to be skaters. It's just not as popular as it once was. So we need to think of a new rad skateboard trick to keep everyone invested. <laughs> we need to bring back Tony Hawk. He still skateboards with steroids. Yeah, yeah he's he's like yeah, forty but, years you know. old and he still regularly like skateboards at a pretty decent level. Okay, but does anyone care though? Given. Give him, like, metal kneecaps and a nuclear fuel heart and steroids and yeah. then let him skate. Strap a rocket to his back so he flies in the air. Yes. Pretty cool. <laughs> that would be awesome. I wish we could do that. We need that and we need Death Race. It's beyond me that Death Race is still not a thing. We have Robot Wars or whatever they're called where they have these little bots in a fucking kiddie pool slap fighting. Skip that shit, just come on, we, we have self-driving cars now, put an antenna on that thing, a couple of guns, and let's go. Let's have fun. The, that's, yeah. that's one that's always disappointed me. Every time we've ever had robot wars or robot fights or robot competitions, our robots are always the lamest fucking things on the planet compared to what you'd want, you know? I, I don't get yeah. it, because, like, battle bots have the strictest regulations that just lead to, like, the same fucking types of bots yep. being built every time. It's so boring. It, it's cause Like, I love battle bots as a concept, and some of the matches are good. Yeah. But they have, like, the strictest shit. Like, your battle bot can't be more than, like, two feet off the ground. It has to weigh So there's X too many amount. regulations, too many red tape. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, and I don't get down. why, because it's little remote-controlled bots. Why not just have them But they don't like want to actual... give the robots too much power, obviously, otherwise they'll Which take Which is fucking <laughs> stupid. <laughs> like, like, Jesus, I, I remember when BattleBots was really, really popular, one of their rules came in because they were worried about the crowd safety. Because apparently some bot exploded or one of its blades came loose or something. It's like, okay, it's just fusion reactor just exploded. Just fucking put it outside <laughs> and, and do something to isolate the crowd or what the fuck ever. Do what you have to to keep people safe, but don't lessen the robots. I, if anything, make them cooler and more deadly. Yeah. I, I don't believe that we can keep people safe in like NASCAR races, but we can't keep them safe from a little fucking RC car with a knife on it. Come on. <laughs> I'm with Charlie. Remove all the red tape. This is stupid. Let people make whatever robots they are. I don't care if fucking DARPA shows up with one of their parkour running cyborgs. Well, do you guys... That would be cool. Do you guys remember what the, the Incredible World Champion did that made them ban an entire tactic in Robot Wars that was like OP as fuck? Well, you're exaggerating, but I know what you're talking about. The one that just fired a net, right? No, the one that flipped them. Do you remember oh, that? never got banned. Flips are still huge. No. Flippers are still big. I thought flipping got banned because flipping was literally broken because you would just flip a robot and then it couldn't move for the entire rest of the fight no matter what. No, that's not... That was never ever the case. Flippers are still big in uh, battle bots. I thought the whole point was that they made a robot. I think it was the Mythbusters who did it, where they made a robot that it, all it was was a wedge with a flipper on it, and they won e every single match <laughs> without even trying because they would just put everyone on their side. No, m most it bots self-correct. Like, oh. almost every single bot in battle bots self-corrects. Yeah, it's a natural ability. All I know is back when I watched Battle Bots, one of the <laughs> one of the main attraction bots was a literal suit of armor on a big motor. <laughs> I think if they flipped that, it wouldn't get back over. Do you remember that one, Charlie? No, but I remember there was a giant pickle. There was. Yeah, there was just a robot that was just a pickle that just <laughs> moved around. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, there should be dumb. a robot like yeah, that is, that's this is really stupid. talented in diplomacy that just talks his way out of the battle. <laughs> <laughs> Dialogue tree. Yeah. Just that's convinces real, the though. other just... robot to lay down his arms. <laughs> Poor, like, I assume an EMP blast wouldn't be legal, right? By that's what robot. I was thinking. Like, hack the other robot, that. like remote access it or something and make it explode. See, that's boring. Let them do just ah, come on. God well, damn it, well an EMP is, so is just kind of inherent. Tape. An EMP would kind of make it not fun because then the other robot would just turn off. So I mean, it's not much of a fight, you know. And but also fry. No, so it's, it's, it's like there's like strength capabilities. That's, well, yeah, that, if if you could defend against it, that'd be fine. But like that's like using a tranquilizer dart in MMA. It's like you're not going to get much of a fight out of it, you know? I want to see that as well, actually. That'd be cool. What, just beating and, a and, sleeping and, man to death? <laughs> yeah. Someone, someone gets in there with like an elephant rifle full of trank darts. 
So you guys have no vision. He has to shoot the MMA, uh, what do you call them? MMA MMA wrestlers while they're doing flips and shit. I propose a weapon and you guys' first thought is, well, then that's too strong. Rather than, okay, and you know what would be even more awesome? No, it's not too strong. Enemy robot came up with something even stronger. So we need to remove the red tape, not worry about, oh, that's going to break the game or whatever. Just what, no, remove all obstacles. Our argument wasn't that's too strong. It was just that it's boring. It just turns it off. That doesn't do anything cool. Yeah. No, yeah. So what you need is a robot enemy that doesn't get so, turned off by an EMP. Some sort of a defensive mechanism. So Kaya, I don't what, fucking know. What you're saying hmm. is you eventually want BattleBots to evolve into nuclear warfare, where they're just launching fucking bombs at each other. Look, if we can settle international conflicts via battle bots, why not? In the we're, ring? We're going like to, Bay based, on, based on modern warfare, eventually we will. Yeah, okay, so instead of putting those unmanned drones and hypersonic plane-delivered nukes onto the battlefield in cities with civilians, build a big-ass ring and let robots handle it. A team of robots. I mean, no, it should be one-on-one. That's more cool. Yeah, Yeah. it is cooler one-on-one. So that's like the plot to a, like, mediocre-ish action movie. What the fuck is the moon good for? Okay, if you're worried about safety, put all this shit on the moon. Lower gravity, too, so that's fun. And then just televise it to the... to Earth. To us. They can duke it out on the moon. What's gonna happen if you fucking nuke the moon? Who cares? We lose the What's the moon ever done for us? Yeah, what about ah. the tides? One nuke isn't gonna blow up the moon, is it? I don't so, know, the I moon mean, seems really flimsy. Yeah, no, I, I feel like it's the moon, I feel like the moon's not that strong. I feel like it only takes a couple of, like, I don't know, a few hits on the moon for it to just completely combust. Okay, Mars then. The fuck are we gonna do on Mars? All those all yeah. the cocksuckers are signing up for that Mars 1 mission where they wanna go and live on Mars. Enjoy the dirt, buddy. I'm gonna enjoy my roller coasters and movies on Earth. And oceans and such, you know, life. Instead of that, put robots on Mars. Wouldn't it be we have literally put Mars robots there? on Mars, haven't we? Yeah, but they don't fight. Cool robots. That's true, they don't cool fight. Robots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool robot. By the way, that's another good point. All them, those DARPA fuckers keep uploading these videos of robots doing parkour. Meanwhile, we have robots on Mars that, like, if if its wheel gets turned at a 1% wrong angle, it's stuck in it. That's like $2 billion <laughs> down the hole and we need to send a new rover, rover to rescue the old one or something. What the fuck, NASA? Why aren't we sending DARPA robots to Mars? Why, why is it still these stupid fucking rovers with dinky wheels that get stuck in Mars dust? They're purpose-built for that terrain. Yeah. Mars is really, really really inhospitable. (laughs) We didn't account for that one rock. While the DARPA robot can parkour, it's purpose-built for walking. Isn't that better than one that just... You guys don't remember this? Like, for a while, almost every month, we used to have an emergency where the rover would get stuck because someone steered it into a fucking sand pit. <laughs> yeah, but what, I imagine robot. like a, a bipedal robot on Mars would be just as big of a disaster. You'd oh, keep tripping worse. over rocks. Yeah, a bipedal robot would be extremely tripping. worse because it would trip and fall over and then never do anything again. How does well, it get up? Can, Have you seen well, the DARPA videos? Yeah, they, what do you they mean trip and fall? That thing would beat you up. That thing has better coordination than you do, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it definitely uh, stands uh, it. up. It still has to get to yeah. Mars, though. But yeah, <laughs> so does uh, it. We'd send the robot there, Andrew. <laughs> no, we, we wouldn't make him. We wouldn't make if him. It's so good at walking, spaceship. you can get there on its own, Jackson. Come on. <laughs> I was suggesting it like hitchhike to the Mars, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your first task is to build a, a spaceship on your own. Or those, one of those little dog robots that they have, you know, those where they kick it around and they fucking run it over with a car and hit it with baseball bats and shoot it in the head and they call it mean names and it, it always just gets back up and keeps tuckering along and opening doors yeah. and running up hills Videos and shit. Videos are terrifying, yeah, that on Mars. Imagine if that thing was designed to hunt they you are. down and kill you. That thing is fucking terrifying. I think I could beat it. It probably the, wouldn't. The dog one? Do you? How? How would you beat it? By wearing the right pair of underwear. There we go. Mm. They'd smell yes. my me undies and be just afraid because it knows I make the best decisions. That's totally true. 
Because MeUndies... I mean, MeUndies has so many amazing patterns. Maybe the robot would tr think it's like QR codes and try to scan it and then just fry its own brain at how amazing the patterns are. It just it can't patterns it, would, now. it would think it would scan you in and with all your incredible camouflage and other MeUndies patterns, it would think you were just a human without a crotch. So you were you just were like half a person and it would ignore you. Mm. Me undies believes Lord. that comfort is about more than what's touching your skin. It's about feeling comfortable in your skin. Keyword is your skin, not someone else's. It's almost <laughs> Halloween, but I'm not talking about some spooky, crazy Halloween shit. Me undies just launched three new Halloween prints. So if you're into cats, blood, or skeletons, they've got something up your alley. Yes. Underwear from MeUndies grows on trees. It's made from irresistibly soft natural fibers sourced from beechwood trees. And you know what natural fibers means? It means their micro modal is not only super soft, but it's breathable, light, and impossibly cozy. Serious comfort, as everything MeUndies does is to help you feel truly comfortable from head to toe, from outside to in. Now, some of you out there, some of you naysayers, some of you little weirdos might be saying, well, I don't care if Halloween is coming up. I'm not going to buy any new underwear because this sounds like a load of, load of hoopla, some superstition, maybe a, maybe fake. Every one of us, all four of us, each official boy wears me undies. Legitimately. Mm -hmm. They are so goddamn comfy. And they are so fucking soft. I love them on my body. You might love them on your body. And you can try them on your body by getting 15% off of your first order and free shipping by going to MeUndies.com slash official. That's MeUndies.com slash official. I have said this every time we talk about MeUndies. I have not one but two pairs of the polar bear print, and I love them. I wear them sometimes, and I feel good when I do. How about you, boys? Hmm. Yeah, it's all I wear for underwear. MeUndies is great. Yeah. I already got the Halloween edition cat print. You guys know I love cats. Of course. Plus, if the DARPA do well, maybe actually that's bad for the DARPA. If I want to escape the cyber dog, it might see a cat and attack Chase me it. extra hard. All right, well, I'm going to need to get the skeleton print then. It'll see the skeleton and think I'm already dead. <laughs> <laughs> just go. Just get your MeUndies, you guys. Get your own print. You can get matching MeUndies too, by the way, for you and your loved one. That's true. Your they, partner. They come in men's and women's, by the way. We for, don't mention that often, but some ladies might hear MeUndies and think that we talk about it. So, oh, it's just men's underwear. It's just boxers. Nope. If you if you want to wear some women's underwear for whatever reason, go to MeUndies. They've got a bunch. Mm-hmm. MeUndies.com slash official. Mm-hmm. That was... Oh, no, I forgot the offer. 15% uh, uh, off your first order and free shipping. Mm -hmm. MeUndies.com slash official. Perfect. Yep. So how come we are still sending astronauts to the moon and shit? Because I, I read that apparently now the goal is to have astronauts back on the moon by knowing NASA probably like 2057 or some shit. And fifty billion trillion dollars later, but why not just send those DARPA robots? I thought we Isn't really slowed down. They could on just it. stay there. I th I thought we really slowed down on manned missions, and now we're mostly doing robots. Unless well, I'm we slowed, wrong. Well, I mean, the robots, yeah, but again, like I said, you just keep sending those stupid fucking rovers. That's about it as far as robots go. And now apparently NASA wants to send <laughs> humans to the moon again. Uh, one man and one woman, I think. I don't know if you guys are planning on colonizing the moon. But why not just send robots? I mean, wouldn't that just cut out the whole human error middleman? Just leave them up there. They don't even have to come back. They can just chill. What, robot, what robots are good enough to send, though? Or do you mean develop robots that are able to withstand the moon? Well, it's not like mm, the moon's that DARPA. hard, right? Like, does the moon have like inherent? Oh, well, I mean, I mean, you would have to you would have to develop a very specific type of robot to be able to navigate the moon, though. Mm -hmm. Just like you can, yeah, you can the just humanoid send, ones or the dogs. You you can just send the dog up there without any kind of development on it. 
Like it would, it, it wouldn't survive up there. <laughs> well, what would it do <laughs> up not? there? Like, what, what, what would a robot even do up there? I think the reason of humans up there is to like gather certain shit or perform experiments or some shit. But what would the robots do besides just like well, jogging around? Yeah, but you don't need the human brain on there. All you need is a humanoid body if you want to, like, a hand with opposable thumbs. If you want to mm. conduct experiments, be it that. Just have a remote controller drone and have that do it for you. What does a human being have to be there in person to collect space rocks? Uh. Dexterity, I guess. Because we can't mm. trust the robots yet. We can only trust yeah. humans. I, I mean, they haven't earned their spot. No matter how good our robot is today, it's not going to do everything perfectly that a human would be able to do, whether it's decision making or mobility. Maybe so, they're unless that there's they're unless there's like a go tournament on the moon or something. Then I guess they would pretty easily. <laughs> We're going to launch up there. deep blue yeah. into space to play chess on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> let's just put a supercomputer on it yeah. all by itself like uh, give it enough of a power source and let it figure out how to fuck to get out of there <laughs> let it figure out the give moon it a... <laughs> give it a good processor and a 3d printer let it figure out a way out <laughs> what if it comes back with a vengeance <laughs> did you guys did you guys read that uh neil degrasse tyson has been uh, like making articles warning people about an asteroid that's going to hit the earth like yeah. a few days before the election he's like fear-mongering almost but then nasa came out and said that it's like only a 0.4 percent chance that the asteroid's actually going to hit earth and on top of that it's only the size of a, like a refrigerator so it's like it won't cause any harm <laughs> do, so do you think of the grass is... dyson <laughs> <clears throat> what do you think this is his tipping point because we've talked a lot how he's been losing public favor and people are realizing his douche do you think this is the point where neil degrasse tyson starts his big slippery no. slope like now he's going to start heroin and he's going to like start <laughs> start appearing on like terrible low budget talk shows trying to get his fame back he but he does. comes off but i mean like it's gonna get worse and worse this is the point where people start going shut the fuck up neil degrasse tyson because he still has fans people still like him overall but do you think this is the moment where people are like, man, that guy's a fucking weirdo and an asshole? I don't know. That's a good question, though. It, like, the, the fucking asteroid wouldn't even hit Earth. It would burn up before it even got yeah. to the ground. Like, I, I don't know mm. how you'd even defend this. Like, oh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is just spitting facts again. Can't handle the truth, I guess. He just wants what you to know said, that though? asteroids can hit Earth, maybe. I, I guess I could spin it that way. Like, he's just trying to be educational and, and wacky and zany, like a cool science uncle. But it, the articles that I had read had, like, a like all the headlines were fear-mongering. And, like, some of them turned it political as well, which was a weird take. No, well, let me guess. Um, it's Trump's fault. No, 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 no. But, like, um, people saying that it might save us from the election... Or oh, humans God. won't be the Because that one is an article her. that I do remember. I don't know if you guys remember that there was an asteroid. What was it? it was something, something. Therefore, Trump is going to cause an asteroid. But they actually, they went through all the steps of why that might, might happen. I think it was with the government shutdown. And the government shutdown would affect some of the NASA's activities monitoring space. And therefore, during a 15-day shutdown of the government, you guys might miss an asteroid hurling towards Earth. It might kill the whole species. Ooh, it was an amazing leap. Also, now I'm reading that actually he said that... Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson I'm talking about, he said that it's not big enough to cause harm. So it doesn't really sound like he's fear-mongering. It sounds like oh, he just maybe, did his yeah. usual, uh, you know, yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson brand of, well, actually, you know, there's an, an asteroid, but actually it's only going to burn up in the atmosphere. But actually, if it didn't, well, though, it would actually kill the whole species, maybe. Then I suppose if it's just actually the... it wasn't small journalists and like people who were writing the articles that turned it into a yeah I've, piece to get clicks. I've been peeking a bit on this and it turns out that what tyson was saying was just kind of harmless and going like oh hey fun fact an asteroid is coming and it might hit the earth but it's it's pretty harmless nothing but a lot of people are writing articles going oh neil degrasse said an asteroid could wipe out the fucking earth before the <laughs> election so maybe maybe tyson's in the right this time Maybe we all jump the Good gun. Good work, Neil. Thank you, Neil. I think he should just shut his face. Yeah, what a, what a fucking nerd. Shut up, Poindexter. 
<laughs> you know it all. No one cares about asteroids that won't wipe us out. What does that have to do with the election, Neil? I, I, I assume he just wanted to squeeze his name in the news again. He seems to be desperate. Uh, guys, guys, is no one going to ask me about global warming? No, so many deniers still. No, they aren't, Neil. Yes, they are. <laughs> Actually, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think a lot of those guys kind of just... I think their fame peaked around the atheist age of the internet. Right, the, like, fedora tipping, most of that. Uh, well, you know, but the high time of the Westboro Baptist Church and such, where it was somehow still a debate whether creationism was right. That's the kind of time where people like Neil deGrasse Tyson were at the top of their interview game. Yeah. You, were, you know, giving speeches almost daily, and now these days it's nobody cares. Why, why, did, um, why did Neil deGrasse Tyson weigh in on the Baptist Church, the Westboro Baptist Church? He was giving the science well, behind being homophobic, I guess. He's, <laughs> nah, yeah, I mean, he was, he was one of the, you know, like, scientists with charisma. Jackson, so in the early 2010s, there was this movement where atheists really wanted to make scientists popular. Uh, what's the name of the other guy? Bill, Bill, Nye. Nye. Bill, Nye. Bill Nye. Bill Nye, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the whole idea was, hey, you know, rock stars are popular and they influence children. What what if we made actual scientists p popular and gave them some fame? And then finally, you know, science can rule the day. And what happened was, you know, fucking Bill Nye ended up twerking on Netflix to retard it, made up pseudoscience. So that plan just crashed and burned. And over time, religion kind of just lost its grip on the mainstream and people like Neil, there was just no use or need for people like Neil deGrasse Tyson to go on TV and talk about how evolution is true anymore, because like 99.9% .9 of people already believe it. It was the so culmination of, just, uh, which is way back in. It was the culmination of this like embarrassing trend where in the late 2000s, you had all these like YouTube channels and all these people where their whole shtick was, uh, God's not real. And, and here's the science. And if you listen to religion, you're a fucking moron. And here's why evolution has to be real. And if you believe in creationism, you're just the biggest fucking idiot ever. And then eventually it started snowballing. And then we got that show you were talking about and people like Tyson becoming celebrities and getting popular. And then people realize like, hey, man, you can believe what you want, but maybe these people are jerks. <laughs> maybe the way they're presenting it kind of makes them a jerk. And now that's where yeah, we it turns are now. Out, you know, if you give someone money and power, it kind of corrupts them regardless of who they are. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they have a PhD. Speaking of like the media drumming up hysteria, though, you guys, I just this, you guys remember net neutrality? Isn't that just yeah. a blast from the past? Oh, you guys remember like so two years ago, ago yeah. when every single so billion dollar social media conglomerate was ordering its users on every like every day on the front page these big red banners telling you mm -hmm. to freak yep. out are you not freaking out if you are not panicking then what is wrong with you you every, must be ignorant if you're not panicking ah, bah, bah. every so whatever uh, happened. every super single clever reddit user by that point like on their subreddit worked in a joke about net neutrality and got to the front page of the website like, you, let's say you're Dude, looking at Game that, of Thrones subreddit. It was like, oh, man, that plot twist when Cersei killed those people sure was shocking, but not as shocking as the Internet will be after net neutrality. And it would just be all over the fucking now. Internet or and Google, Google searches and everything. Every single day, that fucking red meme the, the, with the red background and the white letters telling if you're, if you're not freaking out, you're not paying attention, telling you to be hysterical. And all these billion dollar mega corporations suddenly came together to, you know, kind of sort of slander this one, uh, you know, Indian guy and his family, Ajit Pai or whatever his name was. Yeah. He and then what, what happens? Though. Literally two weeks later, everyone forgot. As far as I know, net neutrality was repealed like two years ago. What happens? I was told by Reddit and hundreds of thousands of upvoters and commenters that I was ignorant and that, you know, if it does get repealed, I'd have to pay 10 bucks per Google search. What happens? I, I would also be curious to know what the fuck happened with all that. I would assume it didn't pass and everyone just literally forgot about it. No, it no, did it, pass. It did pass. Oh, wait, it did? No, oh, it did pass. Well, I'm a fucking yeah, idiot it was, then. It was repealed like two years ago. 
And that's why you haven't heard about it in over two years. To, is it possible? Is if. it possible that it's like an ongoing process or something? Like maybe yeah, there's a buffer, maybe a buffer time period. I was repealed. It I know that much. I just now remember. I mean, it's repealed. There is no buffer. There's no negotiations here. Well, there can always be a buffer for something to take effect. Like they they can decide that it's going to be repealed, but they they can say like this won't take effect until like two years from now or something. I'm not sure. I haven't done any fucking research into this. I don't give a shit. This is... I don't know. It was, it, it was just loud noise on the internet two years the ago. The Verge says net neutrality was repealed a year ago. The articles from a year ago, FCC chairman stands by net neutrality repeal after repeals. So the appeals fell through. FCC's net neutrality repeal impacts blah, blah, blah. What happened since net neutrality was repealed? Fucking nothing, apparently. The coronavirus happened. I'm not sure if it's relevant. True. I'm surprised the fucking social media companies didn't go with that angle somehow. Well, if it was today, they would. You didn't know what? all of this occur before the coronavirus? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <Good old catastrophes. laughs> I'm on. You don't I'm have on to it. Think about it, Andrew. I'm putting the connections together. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nothing happens, did it? It's almost as if all those fucking international corporations lied to you. Dear Reddit users. Well, what, what, what benefit did they have to lying? I don't understand why they would have lied. So the thing with net neutrality was that it wouldn't have really impacted the end user as much as it would have impacted the companies themselves. Like Riot Games, for example, for some while had to fight with an ISP company because the ISP would throttle Riot Games as servers. Not the users. The users didn't have to pay extra to do anything, but like Riot Games, the company would have its own servers throttled. So they had to basically, they were losing money. Oh, so what were they weaponizing so their would, audiences in order to like get out of paying exactly. larger Yeah, fees? basically. Yeah. I see. Pretty much that. Cool. They were telling us that memes were going to be illegal or some shit, or was, this a, was that a different <laughs> that was, I, I, I remember was that. Yeah. That was, that yeah, was, was argument. Article, yeah. article 13. Yeah, yeah, that, was oh, the, yeah. that was the EU, wasn't it? That, yeah. I don't think that would have affected... America. That, didn't that go through though? Isn't Article 13 like in effect? I don't know. Now? I have no idea. Did Article 13 pass? So what? You can go the to jail EU has for passed, making memes. The EU has passed Article 13. This article is from 2018. So yes, since so since two years, this has been in effect. Apparently, I guess. I still use memes. I still see you memes. Sick fuck. What the fuck? I know. You Fucking international to a crime. fugitive. Yeah, you're, you're in the EU as well, aren't you? You should probably not say that, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man, the fucking hysteria. You gotta love it. Ooh, hang on. Here, I still had a topic on a tab open here. You guys remember Amos Yee? Yo, yeah. Oh, that's a good topic. He just got arrested for child porn. The most unsurprising yeah, development yeah. ever. <laughs> but so for those who don't know, Amos Yee... He's staying Yee, true to his brand. I like it. <laughs> this, some people might not even know anymore. Amos he used to be this YouTuber. He got his all of his channels banned like two, three years ago. But this used to be a guy on YouTube who I think he like sought asylum in the US. He moved to the US. He got asylum because in his home country of I don't even fuck it, Le Osha or something, he was like uh he would have faced jail terms for being an atheist. So he was granted asylum in the US and all the atheists were like, Yeah, come here, you're a you may be a blasphemer, but you're welcome here. We don't fucking execute people for being atheists here. You're welcome. You're a free thinker. You're, you're just like us. You're big brain. And then the guy made a YouTube channel starting to defend pedophiles, and everyone was like, what, dude? Wait a minute, what? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Pretty big leap. <laughs> this guy... <laughs> this guy got his assignment Kaya, immediately Kaya, started making... <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I, I think I have like asthma or something. I think you were getting excited. There. <laughs> this guy got her. This guy it got asylum in the, in the U.S. and immediately yeah. started making videos about how you know if you w this was one of his videos. I'm not making this up. I don't remember it verbatim, but the gist of it was if if you whip out your dick in front of a baby and like push it in his face, and if the baby starts sucking on it, that means the baby consented to giving you oral sex. That yeah, was one of his oh, points. I that. Among Fuck. other things. 
It's the most fucking whole, deplorable thing I've ever heard in my life. His whole channel was about how children have the mental capabilities to consent to sex, so pedophilia should be fine. And then he'd make so, videos where he was like, shoe on head was too mean to pedophiles, or stop being mean to pedophiles. Yeah, but, right. Uh, now we would be called minor attracted persons, of course. Uh, yeah, that's Prosecu the preferred uh, term now. So... He's in prison now because the 20-year-old allegedly exchanged nude photos and thousands of messages with a 14-year-old Texas girl while he was living in Chicago. The Oh, he's from Singapore. He appeared in the Leighton Criminal Courthouse, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. The messages included no nude photos he requested and received from the girl and nude photos of himself that he sent to her. The minor repeatedly brought up her age in the messages, the prosecutor said. Can you idiot stop doing this? I mean, keep doing Is it, it like I guess, you fucking idiot Austin pedophiles. Austin Jones are. thing. Yeah. yeah, stop Austin Jonesing yourselves. And the, what was the rapper who had a girl piss on him? R. Kelly. Uh, R. Kelly. Like, what? It does it add to the bits when they, you when you keep ma having the girl just repeat her age to you. It's it's such a good like stupidity problem though. It's like on one hand you want to say stop being a fucking moron because it's funny, but on the other hand the fact they're doing that means they're easier to catch. So yeah, keep doing it. Yeah, it's like a problem that solves itself. Exactly. Really. So. During his bond hearing on Friday, Yi made several attempts to defend himself. He claimed he had information he could provide about his case. Really? But he was told <laughs> to shut up. He just sends a full zip file of <laughs> just the nudes and everything to them? Is that what he was planning Do not on doing? Open do not open your mouth right now, Amos, the assistant public defender repeatedly warned him. <laughs> oh just my keep God. your mouth shut. <laughs> he couldn't help himself. Oh my God. He was... So he was put on a $1 million ba uh, bail and banned from using the internet while he awaits trial. So wait, his his defender kept telling him to shut the fuck up? Basically, and apparently they argued that he was just in... Uh, let's see here. His, assist his assistant public defender described him as an internet troll who is all over the internet saying fantastic things. So they tried to pass it off as, oh, I was just pretending to be retarded or a pedophile. <laughs> I was just yeah. trolling, bro. <clears throat> the judge said Yi was facing charges that were significantly more than an online troll who was trying to get a rise out of someone. So they literally went with the argument, oh, I have this child porn as a joke. Haha, -ha. isn't it funny? <laughs> yeah, That's pretty amazing. much. That was their actual defense. Yeah, apparently. Prosecutors say Yi also ran a pro-pedophile forum on a message board. <laughs> just, for, just as a troll, though. In he also as a, as a prank, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm reading it too. He also had a pro pedophile Discord called Ball Pit. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that actually sounds like a Discord fucking <laughs> lobby right there. Uh, he does. What the fuck? He argued that even if he did sexually abuse a 14 year old, it does not change that there is nothing immoral about pedophilia. <laughs> oh my God. This guy's so brazen. Apparently now he faces extradition, by the way, in case yeah. anyone cares. So wait, he, he, he got asylum from his... You said Singapore? Yeah. Was it, he, So he left Singapore because he was going to be executed because he wasn't... Or he jailed wasn't, um, or something, yeah. Oh, jailed, okay. Yeah, it was something like that. Um. Well, apparently, so... <laughs> Millis... Wait, what? So apparently the 14-year-old he was chatting up, they had a falling out, and then the 14-year-old joined a WhatsApp group called Pedophile Hunters <laughs> to get back at him. Mm. Huh. And Melissa Chen, an outspoken activist... I think I saw that girl on Joe Rogan. Melissa Chen, an outspoken activist originally from Singapore, posted on Facebook that she was one of the... That she was the one who assisted the authorities in Yi's arrest. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, like Charlie said, the least surprising. This doesn't shock anyone. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's a single person out there that's all of a sudden, like, recoiling in their chair. Like, oh, what? How? How could he do this? How could this possibly it... happen? And anyone how could you possibly English? shave yourself better, I Andrew? was going to say the same thing. How could you possibly maintain a better shave? How could you possibly get... 
better self-grooming habits. How could you possibly do it at an affordable price? Well, there's a man. His name is Harry. He owns a razor company. And his new sharper blades are as low as $2 each. Harry's just came out with their sharpest blades ever. And unlike some other razor companies, they're not going to charge you a ridiculous amount just to get them. Boys, I will, I, I'll let you in on a secret here. I used Harry's for a long mm. time, still do, before we even started this podcast. I dig Harry's. They've got a whole lineup of shaving products. They send the blades to your door. Seems simple and easy to me. I also tried some mm -hmm. other uh, competitor blades. Harry's was solid. Harry's was good. I thought Harry's was a great, optimal choice based on all the ones that I shopped around in. And that's probably because Harry's owns a German factory that's been honing razor blades for a hundred years. Mm, I want to read that sentence. Razor blades. I want to read that sentence again. Harry's owns a German factory that has been honing razor blades for a hundred years. Let me appeal to our listeners here. If you heard that line in an anime, you'd be bouncing in your fucking pajamas right now going, that's the coolest goddamn thing ever. Whoa. So when Harry's does it, you should be just as excited because they can also confidently stand by a 100% quality guarantee on their merchandise on harrys.com. Harry's is available wherever you shop. You can get Harry's sharpest blades ever in big box drug and grocery stores near you in the grooming aisle, or if you're a smart, sensible, modern man or woman, you can shop online and go to harrys.com slash official to get a five blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel with aloe, and a travel cover to protect your blade while you're on the go at harrys.com slash official, H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com slash official to redeem your trial offer today and try out those new sharper blades. Nice. German factory, honing razor blades for a hundred years. I can't get over that. That's like the prologue to an episode of Samurai Jack. I love it. I love that line. It's a prologue to a good shave. He's done to shave yesterday. Nice and Damn, smooth. Damn, Kaya, that was smooth. Ha <laughs> ha ha. Shaving. Thank you. Harrys.com slash official. Get a five blade razor and all those other goodies. So speaking of smooth transitions, Jackson's going to transition us into the next topic of discussion. Isn't that right, Jackson? Yeah. Do you guys remember last year when that NBA 2K20 game uh, came out and it had unskippable ads? in it mm -hmm. like this was mm -hmm. a full retail yeah. game it was 60 dollars, and they they had full ads in it that like during the loading screens that you couldn't skip right so you were basically paying for them <laughs> to advertise to charlie you. shut up jackson's then, talking there was Sorry. enough outrage on the internet that they actually removed that feature well guess what feature they brought back for nba 2k 21 yeah, just <laughs> well, how does so this keep happening because it's 2K it fans. They don't fucking care. Haven't they're they spending care money last year. Haven't they gotten they, so integrated that like even the announcers in the game will be like, all right, let's go to the halftime featuring the ad by Snickers. Like, don't they do that now? Probably. Well, yeah, yeah. This is a bit don't different Don't a lot of games well. do this? No. Not unskippable, sorry. Like advertising in games in general. Like I, I remember the racing game a couple of years back at like presidential advertising and it's billboards that you could race by and i don't know why i feel this way but like i, I still feel like that's so sleazy i'd rather see fake advertising than real advertising in my video game i'd rather just see agree. goofy would, made up like gta that. style rather than like i know it's more realistic but now it just I know you just did that for the money, not even to be funny or anything. It's not even funny. It's an actual advert. There's a good balance. No, I, I agree. Like, with you. like so uh, if it's a smaller development team or, or kind of a middle ground, whatever, double A, not triple A, I totally get it. You play in a fucking racing game. You drive by a billboard for like Old Spice and it's like, OK, they had to fund the game or pay for the team or they got a sponsorship. So they were able to do this. Blah, 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 blah. But from fucking 2K games. 
who put out the official only allowed NBA game that sells like fucking hotcakes every year, no matter what. It doesn't change. It doesn't change it. Yeah, they don't even put in the work to change it. If it was a brand new redone or incredible amounts of content and features added thing, I could get it. Fine. They're they're yeah. trying some stuff and putting in all these all these monies and all this shit. But it's just the Do you think laziest the fact that shit. This, this whole ad feature is still in this game is they just copy pasted last year's game. Well, and that's to that's what it. I wanted to bring up. That's what they did with FIFA. Did you see what happened with the new FIFA game? I, no, I, I think no. it's EA that makes FIFA, but uh, oh, yeah. FIFA, the switch thing? this year's FIFA is a literal copy and paste of last year's game just with like an updated roster and the small updates to make it current. But it is a complete copy and paste of the previous year's game sold at full price. So, um, but, OK, but to be fair, to go back to our first topic, the sport itself hasn't evolved. I mean, what are they supposed to but the, but the like game can evolve. Logical enhancement. Ba- the games used More to evolve mode, all like the what? time, though. Like Madden, every year ha- would have like a new gameplay mechanic. Like one year they had like the cone for the quarterback, where you could pick targets and throw more accurately. And then they had the hit stick, where you could like cause yeah, be- 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 better hits point. and better like fumbles. They added gameplay elements because these are video games. The whole point is that you make it fun and exciting and the whole point is why would i buy next year's game when this year i could buy previous year's game and then the company could just add a dlc patch to update the roster if they want to keep it current what's the point but the shitty business the point practice is $60 yeah exactly $60 the shitty business EA. practice they're doing is copy and pasting the same exact game and selling it for $60 and calling it a brand new game so he, he's not joking. He, he's not joking, Kaya. Like this is pretty blatant. Uh, even on the Nintendo Switch store page, th- there's a disclaimer saying this is like they literally put it in the disclaimer saying this is literally the same game. Yeah, fucking, so is fucking. It, it was either it, I think it was IGN who I, I actually gained some respect for. They put out their review of FIFA and they gave it like a two out of ten, and they just copy and pasted their review of the previous FIFA yeah. game, which I think is pretty great. <laughs> What do you mean on Switch it says this is the same game? What do you mean? Uh, I'm trying to get the quote. I'm trying to find it. But Give me a bit. I understand them wanting to be like simulator games, but they're, they're still not. Like there are actual sports simulators out there if you want to be boring and realistic. But these mainline games like Madden, FIFA, NBA 2K, they're, they're still trying to be games and still trying to be fun. But they've just gotten completely lazy with copy and pasting and shilling out the same fucking product, the exact same product. They used to be about games, introducing mechanics that were fun, gameplay, you know? What happened to that? They don't do that shit. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Hmm. To go back to the ad thing, though... um, uh, oh, yeah. You go first, Charlie. It sounds hey, like you found this, what I was looking it? for. Yeah. So on Switch, it says without any new development or significant <laughs> enhancements. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's they, hilarious. They tried to spin it as like a marketing thing. I, I think like they tried to make it sound like a benefit. Yeah. So the actual quote here. I'll just that's bring funny up the whole as thing shit. Real quick. On the Switch right, store like page. FIFA. It's full practice. <laughs> oh, people, there are diehard FIFA players. People love yep. FIFA. It is huge. Probably the one of the most profitable is, series. Soccer is the largest sport in the world. Of course it is. No, I know a ton of people play it. Like back in Turkey, the internet cafes would be full of kids playing the shits, but I meant like esports wise, professionally. Oh, esports, And then I remember, wasn't there a. Wasn't there a shooter who killed someone Madden. because he lost a game of... Yeah, Madden. Well, it was Madden. He was at yeah. a Madden yeah. tournament. He got knocked out early, got mad, and then came back later with a gun. Pro game move. <laughs> Holy shit. It was fucked. It was extremely fucked up. It was very fucked up. Yeah. But yeah, Charlie, the uh, do you have the Nintendo page open for the game? Because there's some great quotes here. Oh, do you have it open? No, I, I do. Don't have it open. Yeah, so, it's so they, it's the official Nintendo listing for the FIFA 21 Nintendo Switch Edition. Uh, some quotes include: "FIFA 21 Legacy Edition will feature the same gameplay innovation from FIFA 20 <laughs> without any new development or significant enhancements." That is verbatim the quote yep. on the. And then page another one the- is. Um, Let's see. The following game modes will be included in FIFA 21 with the same features from FIFA 20. 
<laughs> and then they list like every <laughs> mode in the game. Do you think that's that was a legal thing and they had to do it? Probably. Yeah, but then there's always those actual fucking idiots that keep defending every new iteration of these god awful sports games. Yeah. So I feel like they didn't need to. You'd have the internet argue it for you. They used to be good. That's I also the other don't thing. feel like that. I I can't believe that the Nintendo Store would force their hands into making yeah. this statement because the, the Nintendo. I love Nintendo, but Nintendo really doesn't give a fuck about what the hell ends up on their store. No, this, looks this like isn't. The, yeah. This wouldn't be Nintendo curated. This wouldn't be like something Nintendo forced them to nah. do. Nintendo. This is just the EO's own. Like they're trying to spin it as oh. a positive. N- or Nintendo doesn't it. give a shit about how like good a game is. They just have quality control. Like oh, it's not going to hack your Switch, and yeah, it's playable, and it's not going to break the hardware and this and that. But the the actual quality of how like fun and good the game is, they don't care. I mean, like listen to oh, this. No, they, uh, they under, really underneath don't. presentation, it says FIFA 21 Legacy Edition will feature an updated visual identity with a newly designed in-game front end and menu screens. Now. Now that that spin that basically means this game has a new menu. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's all that is. <laughs> that's exactly like they're just it. spinning. <laughs> they're just spinning. This was like, written by the what, yeah, the company. The P, the, well, obviously that PR. And, and I think um, Charlie can corroborate corroborate because he grew up playing marketing. these games too. But it's sad they used to be innovative, and nearly yeah. every new installment used to have new gameplay and actually like add modes and this and that and. The last like two or three years have just been the laziest shit in the world. And well, because back then you had to, because gaming wasn't like this diehard thing. You'd have right. to make like really interesting games, especially if you're doing like a new yearly release. You have to keep it fresh to keep people wanting to buy it. But now people are just like so in like plus, ingrained in consumerism, they'll buy yeah. everything. Plus, plus, gaming technology was progressing a, like visually a lot faster back then. Obviously, we're reaching new heights now, but uh, like um, console generations back then were much shorter, so that they could put out new games that looked visually different and kind of push the bounds. But the Xbox One generation and the PS4 generation was what, like seven years long, like the longest generation in history, pretty much. So I, I guess there may not have been enough opportunity to innovate. Um, but I would have thought going into like the Xbox Series X and PlayStation Five that they'd do something special. But no, they just I'm released glad the, that literally the same are, game. I'm glad that people are outspoken on it now because there was a definite era in maybe, I don't know, 2015, 2016, where this shit would come out and then everyone would just eat it up and love it and only, like, say positive things and shit on people being negative about it. But now if you check, like, Metacritic user reviews and other stuff like that, people are actually riding on it and shitting on it and saying that it's terrible and dumb. It's not going to impact sales for the most part, which is unfortunate, but at least people are, you know, calling this shit out when they didn't used to. So... There's something. Hmm. Anyway, Jackson, you wanted to go back to the ads. Did I? Oh, yeah. yeah, I was just going to say, like, your example of just driving past an advertisement on the side of the road is not really applicable to being forced to watch an unskippable (laughs) ad in a full $60 game. That's also true. Oh, I know. I know. I meant just in general, like, ads and games are scummy no matter how you put it in there. I don't care even if it's, like... Like the way um, the Kojima game did it, uh, Death Stranding, where there was a bunch of monster on the table or whatever the fuck, Mountain yeah, Dew or, or whatever I it was. was tacky. A fucking Reddit losing their minds going, they all, they look like that fucking Redditor meme with their mouths wide agape, like, oh, it's a monster, it's a monster, it's in the video game, ah, ah, ah. Dude, it's fucking advertising, get over yourself. It's tacky as fuck, it's sleazy. What are you losing your shit over? Yeah, I don't really know. I can tell you the one community of people that doesn't care about unskippable ads in their games are sports fans. So the only people well, they, they're about used that. to it from watching the sports, I guess. Yeah, the only people <laughs> upset about that are people that are not 2K players already. So, I mean, it's a net positive for EA. Honestly, if I was EA, I would divide my annual releases in half. Like I would I'd mm-hmm. make two releases a year. I would do an NBA 2K21 part one. Where it's like the first half of the season <laughs> and then a part two. They would buy that shit easy. They absolutely would. Double your money. Yep. Why don't just, we just, just do it every month? Do it by it month. A weekly subscription. No, do it by month. Yeah. NBA January. NBA February. NBA March. That, pretty, that could work too. Yeah, the, sell, the season updates often team. enough. Let's, yeah, get new players, update injuries, of course. 
Honestly, think about it, though. It's like a monthly subscription fee out of the realm of possibility. Probably no, not. Think, of course, I think what they what they should happen. do what what they should Business. do what could easily make them a bunch of money for real is at the start of the year you put out the next edition or the end of the previous year. So this year you make NBA Two K Twenty One, and then every month you have a subscription fee, say twenty dollars or thirty, like a, a high amount because they'll pay for it. And the whole point of the subscription fee is like an update service. Oh, we update the roster so the stats are more accurate. Yeah, we add in and take out new players and teams, this and that. And update the ads that are shown to you. Yeah. And you keep it current <laughs> with how the season is going. And they pay the fuck out of that and they'd love it. And it would avoid the controversy of like, oh, the new game is bad and it sucks. And people could complain that it's expensive, but sports fans will pay for it. Who cares? They want they probably it. Make, they probably, I'm sure they've run the like, you know, statistics or uh, run the analysis on this and figured out that it's not the way they want to go right now. But thinking about it, like if they charge twenty dollars a month, they'd be making double the amount of money than just uh, like selling a retail. Copy oh, more each than year. double. They just sell. Just sell each team as a DLC. There you go. <laughs> you get the game, it's empty and devoid of life, and you have to buy each team. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> soccer field. Yeah, you just buy <laughs> the that engine, note, basically. It's just empty basketball By the courts. Way. <laughs> By the way, I think the one game that's kickstarted this fucking DLC shit and still the king of it as far as I know and has made the most money out of it deserves a shout-out. Fucking Sims. You guys remember yeah. that game with... Oh, yeah. But on average, like 972 DLCs per game that they would release for young girls to just dump their dad's credit card into. Mm -hmm. oh, you want a new couch? Add, well, that's a DLC. Yeah, but at least that add, like adds content and it's not like fundamental to the game. I mean, people argued I, later on with The Sims 4, they removed content from The Sims 3 when making The Sims 4 to then sell as like expansion God, packs. This stuff, discussion like, is making me miss expansion packs because it's like... Yeah, they cost almost as much as the base game sometimes, but man, did they usually add a boatload of fucking content when they came out. Yeah. Fundamentally changed mm -hmm. the entire game in some ways. It was always exciting. I know. Yeah, like, yeah like you would get excited for expansion packs. You'd buy a game and you'd have your hours of fun with it. And then while the game was still popular, not when it was dying or immediately right after so that people wouldn't need to like feel obligated on it, an expansion pack would come out and it would add like basically three-fourths of a game and it was awesome you remember that uh that nice feeling of, you know how when you used to play a game you'd always have to have the cd in the cd rom because it was it would even if you had it installed it would still read some read, data from yeah. the cd or something mm -hmm. and then when you get the expansion pack one day you would like take out the original cd put on the expansion pack cd ah oh, that feeling man yeah and you could still play the base game on the expansion CD and such. This is like such an old person thing to God, say, I guess, at this point. I, I'm just such a fucking... <laughs> I, I so miss when game DLC and shit like that would actually change a game. Like, Battlefield 2, back when that came out. You had all the maps and the vehicles and this and that. And it's like, this game's great. I'm having a lot of fun shooting people. And then they go, we're releasing our next expansion, Spec Ops, where you can play as, like, special forces and secret operatives. And it's like, well, what's this going to add? Probably just some maps and weapons. And it's like, nope, we added grappling hooks so you can fucking climb walls. We added crossbows with zip lines so you can zip around. It added this whole new dimension of movement to the game and changed up how you could play levels. It's like, games add DLC now. But they don't, like, change the game. They just add more parts to it. Like, Call of Duty has six fucking seasons, and the most radical thing they added was, like, a crossbow mm -hmm. that's not even that crazy or interesting. <laughs> it's because the industry is moving more towards just microtransactions and short-term things that are, are just catch the attention of casual gamers. Yeah. It's, where, it's just because it makes the most money. It does. It, it, I mean, it works. I'm not, I'm not shitting on... I'm not doing the toddler's argument of like, why is it like this? Come on, do it my way. I understand. <laughs> it makes a shitload of money and it's more efficient and it works. But in terms of quality and the experience from it, it's definitely a step down. At least in my opinion. The gaming opinion. industry is getting pretty fucking ballsy there. Did you see they're raising the normal yeah, price of games from 70. $60 to $70? I think that was a while mm -hmm. coming, though. I don't think that's that bad. Like, it sucks, but it was bound to happen. I'm, I'm yeah, fine with it. 
I'm fine kind of with inflation. it if, mm-hmm. if every other country apart from uh, America was paying like the same price already. I'm already paying like 110 Australian dollars <laughs> for a game. And then, oh, and now it's going up again. What a dummy. Get USD, nerd. Get the best currency. Exchange wait, wait, rates, what? baby. Why is it that... Uh, digital games cost the exact same as physical games. I've Jackson, never under- just because they can, pro tip. I suppose. I, I well. don't know how you would do it, but just change your Steam region to either Turkey or Russia. I'm you can get the Steam. games for I'm like fifty percent off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, but it's literally how it works, though. Well, that's pretty good. You're lucky. But uh, to answer your question Steam- on, oh, sorry, Kai, go ahead. So go ahead. <laughs> now nah, you go. We can't. Uh, Jackson, answer your question on why physical and digital are not that different. It it's like pennies, if that, to make physical plastic cases and discs. Like it, it just doesn't yeah, cost but you anything. You have to ship them out and stuff. Yeah, that that is true. The shipping. That is a good question. Then I guess they, they cost the same just because they can. That that is literally. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I know. Yeah. I get the I get the reasoning of money. Obviously, they they make the same amount of money. It's just fucking sucks because then uh, everything's kind of moving towards digital slowly, mm-hmm. but it is. So they're just going to be able to lock you into their store uh, like infrastructure. Like you will only be able to buy Xbox games on the Xbox store, etc. cetera. Um, and then they can just charge whatever they want, really. It's, I don't know. Hey, I don't, I'm I don't, about to piss my pants. Uh, I get the move from 60 to 70, but I don't know. I don't, I, I wish there was more unified pricing across the board anyway I've we just, can wrap here i've been hang on just Whoa, damn. to prevent the spread of misinformation <laughs> i've been informed that the region switching trick i just mentioned doesn't work anymore sorry jackson oh. you'll no, have to well, pay extra <laughs> i'll have to move to turkey instead <laughs> all right thank you everyone right. for listening to this week's episode patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes we will also be watching cats sometime this week and then uploading that to our patreon so you can listen along with us watching cats Mm -hmm. at some point um yeah that's everything thank you we'll see you next week we have annual plans now actually you forgot to mention that um and a slight discount check those out bonus episodes obviously and the patreon discord where you can find our amazing live chat now we're done all right well that's everything all right bye thanks everyone thank you Bye. bye